Hello Sea Wolves! Good morning probably or maybe good afternoon or good evening and it's Monday, a new day of the week so lots of adventures await us but shall we start with some absolutely, you can see how steamy it is, fresh uh, coffee. Here we go, three, two, one. That's hot, nice. Delicious is what we call that. Let me get it to the side here so it doesn't steam up the whole screen during the whole show. <laughs> okay, welcome. So, uh, interesting day uh, today. Not so much going on uh, within the, uh, the Vendée fleet as far as, uh, you know, uh, big breakages or retirements or anything like that. Good news, I guess. But interestingly, today is the day that, uh, well, more or less the Jules Verne trophy is cutting straight through the Van de Globe uh, uh, fleet and is very likely to actually pass um, Charlie Dalin in the front of the fleet somewhere within the next, uh, well, maybe 48 hours already. They're really, really close, almost uh, passing uh, Cape Horn. So uh, I thought it would be interesting today to kind of take a look at, uh, at both predictions at the same time since uh, um, the uh, Sodibu uh, Ultim 3 is right now more or less smack in the middle of the uh, uh, pretty spread out Vendée Globe uh, fleet and I thought it would be nice today for once to kind of combine the uh, uh, predictions. So let's take a look at the trackers and actually start with uh, Sodibu Ultim uh, 3. As we can see they are right now more or less uh, straight downwards of uh, Cape Horn, already quite a little bit past, but uh, you know, it's very clear, you can very clearly uh, mark out the location relative uh, to the Cape. And when we look at uh, Windy and actually look at that same uh, position, so here we have the Cape, we see that uh, they are more or less positioned roughly uh, here. So quite a bit to the south of the Van Globe fleet because uh, they have to deal with the ice gates and uh, the Jules, uh, Jules Verne trophy doesn't uh, uh, have that uh, uh, restriction. So uh, they've moved quite a bit more south to uh, pick off more wind and basically optimally move with the system. Of course, um, you know, risking more the danger uh, of ice obviously. And so most likely with the, with the weather prediction, we can run it a bit here for the next 24 hours. Uh, we see that actually uh, this low that's positioned right underneath the Cape right now, a little bit to the east, is going to keep slowly uh, moving east and uh, is basically going to provide an absolutely perfect uh, uh, ramp. We can see as we move through this that the wind speed's more or less always 25. Here in this ridge a little bit lower but still pretty good. And then we go right back into 28, 30, 30-ish uh, knots again. And basically that continues all the way up to the Kurgan Islands and, uh, and straight through and more or less the whole course looks like you know, somewhere between 15 and, and 30 knots all the way. And so this line is perfectly saleable for, uh, for Sudibu. They might go uh, south of the islands actually, but you know, most likely north. And so it looks like if they go at the current speed, of course, an average of 30 uh, knots, I think actually, yeah, so last four hours, 34 knots VMG of 30 actually and uh, over the last 24 hours also 34 knots 28.3 VMG that's just absolutely insane uh, speeds they're quite a bit so 679 miles ahead of the previous record so that's you know at those speeds that's a little bit over a day so uh, you know that's around the world in 38 point something days right now. That's really, really uh, impressive if, they, uh, if, if that would be what it comes out to uh, in the end. But uh, just goes to show you, right, they don't have that risk of the ice gate. They can go as, uh, search basically as much wind as they can uh, find. And so at this particular speed that they're doing right now, about 10 to 12 knots average, faster than the um, 
the fastest boats uh, in the Vendée. If you look at uh, Charlie, for example, uh, now, uh, let's see, actually we should check that up on the tracker here. Um, let's see how he is doing. So uh, on average, we see that he's doing about uh, 19 uh, knots. So 18, 19 knots on average over the last 24 hours. Just think of that difference. So 18, 19 or 30 four it's absolutely crazy it's almost double the speed in some cases it is double the speed so um, with that in mind and the fact that they have more or less perfect uh, uh, weather at least for that uh, trimaran and there's no reason to assume that they'll slow down at any point it's likely that within the next 48 hours maybe it Eatsy peetsy more, uh, they're going to be side by side with, uh, with Charlie if he continues at this speed. And they're going to be uh, having passed basically the entire fleet uh, at that point. Crazy if you think about that, uh, right? So that's pretty much uh, what's going on in the Trophy Verne. Looks excellent. Uh, right now they're in the Southern Ocean, so they are rolling with these uh, roaming low pressures that I talked about yesterday also. And uh, yeah, bar anything crazy happening like an iceberg or anything, they have a really good chance to at least make it all the way to uh, Cape Horn. Of course, uh, it's anybody's guess again what will happen if they get uh, there. But uh, yeah, as far as wind, they've, they've gone through the Atlantic, so they're out of the danger of you know, very variable uh, weather there. And now let's just see uh, what happens uh, with them during the Southern Ocean. We're definitely gonna keep an eye on it. So I'll, do, I'll include that in a daily update uh, from now on. Then for what is happening right now in the Van de Globe. So uh, we can see that, uh, let me move the prediction to uh, right now. So uh, what we can see is uh, that we have basically three lows that are all uh, more or less surrounding the fleet. So we see that um, if we look at the, the front of the fleet, they're more or less surrounded. We have this low pressure of Cape Horn that is uh, kind of uh, ravaging them uh, from behind. We have uh, this low a little bit more uh, to the south that is actually strengthening this other uh, system, creating a really strong uh, uh, winds kind of right in between those two. And then we see a little bit to the east and a little bit to the north, we see a third system, which is you know working together with this system system on the south here to really create this very strong kind of avenue of wind here. And of course we see also this ridge, so a pretty uh, interesting, well it's not really a clash because they're actually uh, you know turning in the same direction and so they're, they're actually strengthening each other uh, here. But uh, yeah, right now this area here, that's, uh, that's weather that you can uh, rightfully call a doozy. So um, not easy for the sailors at all, because for the last 24 hours they've had some better uh, weather. But it looks like if we, if we jump ahead a bit in the prediction, we see that basically the, the top northeast end of the, of the weather uh, for especially the head group is going to get a lot more uh, aggressive. So if we go through this slowly, we can see that this kind of storm front, that's, it's right now a little bit to the, uh, to the south of the, of the leaders and, and of the fleet indeed. This whole thing, is going to uh, keep moving to the east and especially this part that's kind of behind is going to move more, more north. The system is going to clash together and then quite suddenly we see that the strength of the storm really moves up here and uh, and basically you know when you when you look at this particular picture you see that there's really no way for the entire fleet to avoid this. So it just cuts, cuts a path right over the entire fleet. And it looks like a very, very chaotic system. So we have a bit of a, uh, you know, like the heart of the storm, not the, the typical circle, but more of a trough. So like a, a, a long line shape which uh, you know, can create very variable uh, weather where you're basically in strong winds, then suddenly nothing, and then suddenly very strong winds from uh, the other side. And uh, usually a longer ridge like that, you can have also um, you know, lots of uh, local storms, thunderstorms, uh, etc. So you know, with this weather basically across the whole front of the fleet, they're all gonna have to do with it. And that's going to continue uh, basically all the way deep into uh, Wednesday. And it's just gonna grow and grow and grow. So they're all gonna have to, you know, more or less fight their way through this. And you can see that, you know, we see a PVA here. I put kind of the, the prediction lines on for them. So they're gonna, at present course, really have to sail straight to uh, the heart of that. 
And uh, yeah, if we look at these numbers, I mean, just to, just to check, this is yeah, this is well into the 40s. And on open ocean, when the prediction says 40s, you know, there's the easily could be 50 or you know uh, up even uh, to 60 knots. So this is again, uh, I guess, the second really really uh, strong uh, Antarctic uh, storm that uh, they're going to have to uh, move through. And the same goes for the rest of the field, so you don't see these prediction boats now move up with the rest of it. But, you know, they'll be right behind, of course, uh, uh, the two leaders hitting this storm kind of at the same uh, angle. So I would say that for the whole front of the fleet, this for the next three days is going to be a new test. Very, very much akin to what we saw as they were starting to pass uh, Cape Horn, seeing a lot of breakages, seeing really you know, everything that could uh, could go wrong, every bolt that was a little bit loose, you know, uh, uh, bite, let's say. And uh, yeah, this is one of those situations where we're again going to see that real testing of the sailors, that real testing of the equipment, everything being pushed right up to uh, uh, its limits. And uh, and for a, for, for a day of two, maybe three full days, they're going to be really sailing in a strong, strong uh, storm. So um, yeah, I hope and pray that everything will be uh, all right and uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, when we look more to the middle of the fleet, so uh, we have here again this group with uh, Lossi 10 now actually moving all the way uh, to the front. So yesterday he was still a bit uh, in the middle but now moved to the front of this little uh, fleet here and uh, yeah they had a bit better wind again uh, yesterday right now this is the weather prediction for them so you know uh, uh, pretty good interesting system this with like much stronger around the edges but kind of uh, okay I guess closer uh, to the center of it which is also slightly unusual but it's because all of these systems are closely uh, interlinked and uh, yeah they're basically having quite nice uh, uh, wind uh, right now 14 15 knots and you know as this goes through pretty much the same until they really get into that uh, more stronger area but looks like this entire uh, fleet here if we uh, let the weather prediction run 24 hours up we see that basically yeah like I showed you earlier this just slowly moving uh, to the uh, to the east at a good speed if we go a day ahead we see it's moved significantly more but basically no interference with their line so this whole group as you can see very close to the uh, ice occlusion zone and they're just going to skate right by that inclusion zone uh, and um, at really fabulous speeds and at more or less uh, very comfortable uh, wind speeds to really push the boat at. So 15, maybe 20 knots, uh, you know, very, very nice uh, sailing in seas that won't be uh, too big. So perfect conditions for them really. So it'll be interesting to see um, if they can put that uh, to their advantage. And then we have at the back of the group, now uh, we see that, uh, let's, let's move the weather again to right now, that uh, uh, Jeremy, uh, really taking the strategy of moving towards the ice line. So uh, yeah, his, his distance from the rest of the fleet getting shorter and shorter, but very clearly he's uh, going to do uh, the same. You can see the black line from uh, Lossi 10 here, uh, pretty much running around. And I think he'll follow that same course and then he'll just skate absolutely right on the rim of the ice exclusion zone to also give himself the shortest uh, uh, path. But uh, speed uh, looks good, you know, for the wind speeds that he's been having. Nice downwind sail now, 14, 15 knots uh, average over the last uh, 24 hours. So he's making really uh, uh, great speed and still, you know, nicely uh, catching up with the rest of the fleet here, as we see with Merci, 11 knots over the last 24 hours. Uh, we see uh, Mr. Shirishi, uh, 10 knots. So uh, yeah, he's definitely still gaining there. And I think, yeah, this, this 24 hours. So by the end of the day, he'll be, I think, uh, more or less uh, as far along the course uh, as they are. And he'll be actually somewhere in this group as opposed to uh, at the end of it. And so, uh, yeah, that's really the prediction uh, for uh, right now, very lively fleet. The race is just in full swing. Uh, personally, I'll be very happy to, uh, to see uh, Jeremy catch the first boat. So when he first passes uh, Merci later today, I think that'll be a real 
cheering moment uh, uh, for me and I'm also very very interested to see uh, uh, what will happen with uh, Lossy Tan so uh, if they are uh, going to if our Mel trip on is going to um, you know gain uh, gain on the uh, rest of the group because the head group has to be so careful trying to hold back a little bit with this extreme weather and then sometimes having a little bit less wind 15 to 20 knots actually can give you uh, a better boat uh, speed if they have good uh, control and you know some weather ahead so they can put big sails without too much risk so uh, I'll be curious to see what happens there and finally about the interview uh, tomorrow so I'll be interviewing uh, Peter Herema uh, Dutch entry in the last uh, uh, Globe, completed uh, the race in his boat no way uh, back foiling uh, Imoka one of the the first to actually uh, complete uh, the race uh, with foil so uh, very special and a very interesting character hasn't done so many uh, English interviews long form English interviews uh, really none at all that were like over uh, 15 minutes or so so I think it'll be very interesting to hear uh, you know a lot more hopefully of his uh, story and also very unique sailor in the sense that um, he has always been a very successful uh, businessman and so really uh, wrote his own ticket into uh, uh, the van day, you know, bought the boat uh, himself, uh, more or less his own sponsor also. So he really had to, you know, push everything personally, uh, so the, both the business, the family side, and of course the, the race itself. So I'm very interesting, uh, interested how he trained, how he built himself up for the race, all of the technical things that he uh, uh, ran into and his experience from being, uh, you know, already a very experienced uh, uh, match uh, sailor to, you know, shifting his attention to this and, you know, building up and, and getting uh, uh, through this race uh, and the, the psychology of the different, uh, you know, phases of the race, let's say. So uh, hoping to uncover lots of very, very interesting stories. And of course, we'll also talk about, you know, some of the uh, technical aspects tomorrow. So if you have questions for Peter, Put them in the comments uh, below and I'll try to work as much of them uh, into the interview uh, tomorrow uh, for you. So really looking uh, forward to that and uh, we're doing the interview in a really, really cool uh, studio. I think you'll be amazed how good everything is going to uh, look. Most likely won't be published tomorrow because uh, we're, we're uh, interviewing somewhere around noon here and I don't know if I'm going to be able to edit it all fast enough to make it, you know, uh, to, to kind of give it its due to publish it uh, tomorrow. So probably tomorrow we'll have like a short, um, slightly later normal uh, update with the weather. Uh, and then on Wednesday, I'll most likely publish uh, the interview. So just so you guys know. So I'm looking forward to your questions. Uh, and that's basically it for the update uh, today. So uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't yet. Make sure to hit the uh, notification bell on all notifications so you get notifications whenever I post, post a new uh, update. And uh, you know, if you want to know more, if you want to join our virtual sailing uh, team, the first one is already uh, full, but uh, we've opened a second one, team B so you can now uh, join that and um, yeah go to the website for more info seawolvestv.com also for uh, all the amazing seawolves uh, merchandise we have sweaters we have hoodies we have caps we have coffee cups of course uh, so if you like to you know support the channel in some uh, cool way and also get something cool for yourself to uh, identify yourself as a seawolf uh, to others and uh, recognize other seawolves in the street or in the marina I'm still working on the flags by the way um, that's really uh, nice and it really helps the channel do things like this interview that I'm going to do uh, tomorrow. So uh, thank you all again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with a fresh cup of coffee.